It's 100 years old, with more than 100 stories connected to it. So many secrets, riddles, where it came from, where it went, and how we got it back. Fasten your seatbelt. This is going to be an interesting ride. I'm Chris Epting. History excites me, especially history that's waiting to be uncovered. I feel like a detective sometimes, sifting through clues, chasing down leads, and examining evidence. That's why I've written so many books about it. When you discover an untold story, it sparks the imagination, it connects you to the past, and sometimes it even helps you see into the future. Welcome to Hidden Huntington Beach. Jeff, you grew up here, so you would drive by this place when you were a kid. It was probably yeah. Mario's Liquor Store or, yeah. or a Subway. I remember um, both of those. Thousands yeah. of people are driving past here every day and, and are probably unaware that this is a really important piece of hidden history when it comes to yeah. the Huntington Beach Fire Department. I, I wouldn't have known until I was working here and, yes. you know, learned about it. I mean, you know it now, yeah. but we're standing in front of what was formerly the Ocean View fire station early 60s into the 1970s. When you first drive by, you really you really don't know what it is other than an old, an old cool brick building, you know. What's it like for you guys to be here today? What do you, what do you feelings do you get? You know, there's always a sense of pride that that's kind of our history and, and the fire service is all about tradition and history, so. The, the department is founded in 1909. It's a volunteer department. The first station, I think, is the northeast corner of Orange and 3rd. That's gone. The original Main Street station is gone. This is still here. Why do you think it's important to keep a place like this? If you take tradition out of the fire service, then it's just another job. But what jumps out? How do you tell somebody this was a fire station? What's the first feature, the most yeah. identifiable feature? The, the, you know, the you know, apparatus bay is the most identifiable thing about our firehouse because we got to get fire engines in and out. So big roll-up doors, and you can see that it was two apparatus bay doors. The bricks that are obviously out of place, they're different style brick. So those and, are newer. Yeah, because obviously that, that couldn't have been there. This had to be the ro a roll-up door for a fire apparatus to get right. in and out. And then same on the other side. Um, and so this whole thing is what we used, what we still call an apron. So these bushes uh, so if I could drive here. Yeah, <laughs> these bushes <laughs> and, the, and all of this was not there. I bet that marquee was there because it's split and it's lined up right with the midpoint. So they probably can just go right around it. So that probably was there as an identifier for the fire station. Guys would have been working right here, right? Yeah. Like I, they would have been right where we're standing. Absolutely. and and. Um, when we have a chance to go look at the old the old fire engine that we restored, it's uh, it's nostalgic to think that that was probably parked here. They you're, worked. You're on connected it. to those guys that were all here, right? right? I mean, you're you're forever connected. These are your brothers in arms, in effect. Absolutely. The building, when you see it from the street, it doesn't look like much, but it goes back yeah. pretty far. It gives you a sense of kind of the depth and scope of what went on here. Why don't you lead the way and talk yeah, a little bit about what, structurally what we're looking at? Nowadays, when we build a fire station, we have a focus of not wanting to have to back the fire apparatus in right. off of the street. We want to be able to drive around and pull through for safety, for not blocking the roadway. And so this was still in an era where that wasn't a concern. The location is right on Beach Boulevard. And nowadays, Beach Boulevard is way too busy to have a firehouse right on it. This station was replaced with two stations over off of Gothard. Right. You know, a block away, uh, where definitely significantly less traffic, way easier for us to get in and out of the firehouse without disrupting the flow of traffic and all that. So. Most of our fire stations now are built with a large amount of viewing space that you can see inside the fire station. The roll-up doors are glass, right. or there's something glass. And I look at this. It's like a bunker. It was just a bunker, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, mm -hmm. but you can see that the rear of the station here was where the dorms would be, right? It was 24-hour right. living, so the dorms, a small kitchen, bathroom, little office space. It looks like it became a drive-through at some point, too, because you can still yeah. see the menu board yeah. after it was a fire station. So mm -hmm. the buildings had a couple of different lives, obviously, as restaurants. All right, guys, you have you know, the history detective in me. You've whetted the appetite. I got to see more. The audience wants more. Andre, lead the way. Let's go see some more All history. Right, let's, let's do, do it. it. This is Huntington Beach's first mechanicalized fire engine. Um, as the city got busier and they decided that they were going to get rid of the horse-drawn vehicles. We go from horses to this. To this. 1922. 
This yep. rolls off the line in Ohio, right? Mm -hmm. Los Angeles City Fire Department had ordered a bunch of these and we kind of piggybacked on it, customized it a little bit for Huntington Beach, but it came over uh, on a train and there's actually a crazy story that on the train coming over here from Columbus, Ohio, um, there was a fire, brush fire, and they pulled a few of these rigs off that train to put the fire out, and supposedly this was one of so them. So it fought its first it fire, fought first on fire route. On, in route here. Yeah, yeah, in San Bernardino County. San Bernardino <laughs> County, so. Incredible. I stand here and I look at this, and I think about, okay, Huntington Beach in 1922, oil is discovered only two years earlier, so the city is going through this incredible explosion. Business, population, workers, everything. So this had to have been pretty busy. Was in service for how long? Uh, it was in service for about 25 years, then it went to reserve status for about 10, and then it was donated to Travel Town Museum up, up in, in Los Angeles. Park. All right, so mm -hmm. it sat there for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been to Travel Town. They've got incredible mm -hmm. artifacts there, trains, trucks, cars, and everything. But at a certain point, the city wants it back. How does that work out? What's the, do they buy it? Is it yeah, donated? How yeah, does it work? so the funny thing is, Chief Dolder, I mean, all the fire chiefs are visionaries, right, in their own facet of what they think a fire department should be. Well, one of his was to get the fire engine back here to Huntington. So he brokered a deal to trade a forklift to get this back to the city. <laughs> you got it for a forklift. For a forklift, yeah. We got the better of that deal, yes, I think. Yes, for sure. Oh, yeah. You get fact. it back down here, though, and it doesn't look like this. What does it look like when it gets here? It was, it, they had put a coat of paint over it, just a generic red over the whole thing. Uh, there was stuff missing because other departments that were restoring their vehicles had taken it off of this apparatus. And I always say it looks the way it looks because of Rex, and it runs because of me, right? Every leaf spring, everything was taken apart. And then I always mention the, the, the bolts. If, if, if you ever have a chance to look at all of our bolts, they were all ground down and polished by Rex and his crews. And Rex, uh, how many people <laughs> were working with you? you? I know you're kind of spearheading it, but how big was your team on this? Um, I mean, there's probably a group of maybe 10. 10 core guys and then everyone would just kind of help. And it was just a real great way for us to bond, you know, as a crew. How does it feel to be standing next to something so important? Rex and I both were engineers. I'm still an engineer. He's promoted the captain. But nowadays, you literally just jump in the rig. You start it. You push a button, push a few other buttons. The sirens go off and you're driving down the road, code three. But this, um, there's a term I use when I'm teaching the new engineers. They, we call it a barn boss. That means you're in charge of the barn, the, the rig, and everything. When you were an engineer, meaning the driver on this rig, you were the barn boss. There's levers everywhere that I still don't know how to operate well, and that's why I drive slow in it. But you had to know how this thing felt. It was when a to whole shift. different it's mentality different and mechanical world. system, yeah. right? Different world, different world. It's kind of hard to see, but right here, there's just a glass uh, w with a little pipe in it, and that was our, that's your oil pressure. So you're actually watching the oil. You're watching oil you drip know. through there, and that's how you know whether you're getting oil <laughs> through your motor there. So we could use that today. I you think could use it today. Yeah. What's so, the story of the bell? Uh, Golden West College has a bell game that they have with Orange Coast. Yeah, Battle of the Bell. They actually have a bell that whoever wins that game right. gets passed back. There's actually a plaque on it that explains all of this on there, but that bell was the original bell that sat on this rig. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've since purchased a new one for now, but yeah. I think one day we'll, Maybe we'll have one day, if you have an extra the forklift, bell. maybe you can swap yeah. that one out. <laughs> yeah. Rex, you've been working on this for how long? Uh, we've been working on it for about 15 years. Built in 1922 for $14,500, mm -hmm. substantial amount back then. Um, served HB from 1923 to 1955, down at 5th and Main, where the original fire station was. Um, retired in 62 and donated to Travel Town. I got to be honest, guys, we looked at this a little bit earlier today, and it's, it's, it's a sight to behold. Um, if I'm lucky, maybe you let me take me for a little I spin after. We're, we're gonna do it. But you discovered something here that I think, in terms of hidden history, when you come from it the way I like to come at things, of what's that thing that we don't know about? What's the hidden piece that really tells a new story? You found not one but two things on this truck. One day we were at the fire station, we had these panels, and I happened to see a little raised area underneath the paint here. I kind of messed around with it, and I, and I mentioned it to Rex. I said, I think there's something underneath there. Well, these guys started lightly sanding and sanding, and then from behind all that paint and the sticker, um, this artwork showed up. So the artist in Ohio would have been charged, presumably, with, OK, this is going to Huntington Beach. It needs artwork on it mm -hmm. that somehow depicts what, in their imagination, mm -hmm. was Huntington Beach. Correct. And they painted a sailing ship, a mm -hmm. tall ship. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's. I mean, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful piece of art it is. that nobody at Travel Town ever saw, right? Because they had it covered. 
So when the artist dealt with this side, this was the other piece. So a lighthouse. A lighthouse. That was the representative image. So you've got the tall ship and the lighthouse. And, it's, it's, and that was his vision of what Huntington Beach was. And, and if, But if you hadn't gone that little extra mile and noticed something underneath, we may not be looking at that today. Yeah, yeah there's a couple moments during this whole project and in life you get goosebumps, and this was one of them. For me and I think for Andre, when he mentioned, I think there's some pinstriping there, and I remember pulling off the sticker and then getting the sandpaper, and there must have been a 30 second of inch of paint and primer and all this other stuff on there. And I just remember sanding and sanding and sanding. And the moment I saw that, I got those goosebumps and I called Andre one way, Andre, he'll never believe it. For, for what you guys have done, you, you are really, you're, you're history heroes, you know, to, to put this kind of, kind of love and energy and passion and expertise into a project like this. I mean, the results are, are clear. This is absolutely stunning, like I said. What, why does this matter so much to you? Yeah, like for me personally, just the historical value, there's not many of these out anymore. You know, they have been scrapped or just been, you know, lost in time. And it's just kind of a tribute to the people that kind of paved the way for our profession 100 right. years ago. Being a firefighter, the passion is, it's not just like a normal job. There's a deep-seated passion of community service, helping people, yeah, attention to duty, and this is not only a tribute to history, but a tribute to the people that, that started it for us. For serving the community, for serving history, we salute you, we thank you. You really have done something magnificent here, thank so you. thank you very much. Andre, we had to pop over here quickly to the Lake Street Station at Lake in Frankfurt. Really kind of a cradle of HP history. The trains used to run right here. You got Brewster's Ice right behind you where we've been before. But we're here for a minute to talk about, talking of artifacts, this amazing bell. This used to be over on Main Street. Yeah, this was one of the original bells that, you know, set the tones off. <clears throat> and this station is an important station for us. It's our downtown station. It's a busy station. But you were saying architecturally it's also special because unlike the place on Beach Boulevard, which is this kind of bunker-like brick structure, this is much more open with windows. Talk about the history, the hidden history behind that. Yeah, you know, early on, those those stations that were built in the 70s, a station we were at last with the old fire engine, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see the, the, it was a time when the fire service was really trying to establish and say, we're more than a fire department. And the chiefs really wanted people to see what was going on inside. And so he built our stations with visual, you, from the outside, you could see the guys working. This was built in the 80s, and we started to, to get our foothold as a fire department, so it's not as drastic. But you can see these windows here are actually lead to our captain's office. Um, the doors, although they're not full windows like our other stations, they still have windows where you could see if the apparatus. And it creates that community connection. Absolutely, yep. So Andre, a couple of things many of us associate with old school firehouses are Dalmatians, which you said are, were originally to help round up the horses, so That's those correct. go back away. There's correct. no Dalmatian here. No Dalmatians But here. the other thing are fire poles. We all grow up watching movies and TV shows, seeing the fire poles where firemen come, you know, racing down. And here's your fire pole, but you were saying kind of a little bit of hidden history. There's only two of these in Huntington Beach, and this is the only one that actually goes someplace. Yeah, we have two of them, one at our Warner Fire Station and one here at Lake. And Warner, it's a single-story fire station, so they, there's a pole there. <laughs> like that a kind prop. Of, pretty much a prop. But uh, yeah, this one gets used. Our dorms are on the other side of this brick, uh, at the top on the other side here, and you come out, there's a little system there, you hit it, and you come down. Now, the only thing is usually it's uh, the younger guys will, will, will use this pole. You know, I did when I was younger, and then as you get older, your back hurts and you hit the, you hit the bottom there. But, but young guys still use it. It still gets used, absolutely. If you want more Hidden History, check out our Facebook group, which is simply Hidden Huntington Beach. We've got over, over 15,000 members there sharing stories and home movies and all kinds of great things. So hope you enjoy that, and we'll see you soon in another edition of Hidden Huntington Beach. Sitting here, I'm, you know, you're, you go back 100 years, and you think, who sat here? Who drove this? But where did it go? What did it tend to? What were the events 100 years ago, 90 years ago, where this was on call? And that's where my mind is going. So I think if I have a next step in this, 
from a detective standpoint, it's to look for those logs and try and figure out, go through the old microfilm and all that and try and figure out the life that this truck led back then.